bold one you are. And who gave you leave to be kissing me? So you can talk. Yes, I can, I will, and I do. And it's more than talk you'll be getting if you step a step closer to me. Don't worry, you got a wallop. The whispers of a real-life romance have always entrenched the blissful on-screen couple, John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara. But as we know today, the duo hardly ever had to act to give a powerful romantic performance. Join us as we break down how Maureen's grandson confirmed the John Wayne rumors. A friendship in the making. John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara worked like water. The duo, who was known for its electric on-screen chemistry, made each other into phenomenal performers. From the very get-go, movie directors and producers have understood that Wayne and O'Hara are the quintessential duo that brought the best out of each other. Maureen O'Hara brought softness and tenderness to the larger-than-life roles that John Wayne embodied. Both had intense emotional depth with their characters, and it seemed like they were living and thriving the plot lines curated on the screen. The way they worked together as an on-screen couple was no different from how they interacted with each other off the camera. But of course, the only difference is that they never allegedly shared any romantic relationship whatsoever. It doesn't change the fact that their on-screen romantic energy was swoon-worthy. This is why it isn't surprising that both Maureen and John had to grapple with intense rumors of their real-life romance. It didn't matter if they were happily married to their partners or were openly dating. Their audiences simply wanted to accept that their erotic on-screen romance was also a fragment of truth. Yet officially, John and Maureen were best friends who understood each other through thick and thin. By the time the Queen of Technicolor made her debut in The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Wayne was a familiar name in Hollywood. Nine years ago, the Duke had appeared in The Big Trail, marking his magnificent entry onto the silver screen. But it is also true that the actor's definitive stardom moment came at the very same time when Maureen was about to make it big in the movie industry too. In the same year, Wayne appeared in the groundbreaking film Stagecoach, where he played the role of the devil outlaw, the Ringo Kid. The movie was successful in confirming Wayne's status as the invincible Hollywood star who perfected the craft of the Western and war movies genre. Later, he would appear in movies The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance and Sands of Iwo Jima, further solidifying his roots in the Western genre of films. Throughout this dynamic and ever-moving career transformation, there was one thing constant in Wayne's life, his beautiful friendship with Maureen O'Hara. He had met the actress on the set of The Hunchback of Notre Dame through the director and their mutual friend, John Ford. Call it a lucky hunch or the decision of a lifetime, but Ford was convinced that Wayne and O'Hara would be the next it Hollywood couple. And well, can't say that he was wrong. As soon as the duo met to practice lines and run some scenes, they knew that they were on to something. Maureen, who was a newbie on the set, became entirely comfortable and relaxed in the presence of John Wayne, who also welcomed her with open arms. Despite an excellent run with the movie, the duo didn't become as close of friends as they would in the upcoming years. When they were asked about working with each other, they had the most appreciative comments about each other. But of course, they still hadn't transcended into the camaraderie that would last more than three decades. In 1950, the duo appeared in the high-profile Rio Grande, which laid down the foundation of their collaborations that would change their lives. This is also the film where the duo became friends. Maureen said about their blooming friendship, We were very friendly, but not yet the closest of friends. The seeds of that deep friendship were planted on Rio Grande and grew naturally over time, and while making four more pictures together, we loved working with each other. From our very first scenes together, Working with John Wayne was comfortable for me. Rio Grande featured the themes of love, conflict, and military through the lives of Wayne and O'Hara beautifully. While the Duke took on his typical charismatic role of a strong male lead, the Queen of Technicolor reclaimed the title of a dynamic female lead by adding a pang of strength and agency to her character. Wayne played the role of Lieutenant Colonel Kirby York, who was tasked with leading a cavalry against raiders at the Mexico-United States border, while Maureen portrayed his long-lost wife, Kathleen York, who surprisingly arrives at the scene to take their underage son home after she bought him out of his army enlistment. Both actors were hailed for embodying the complexity and hardships that military families face, 
and the turbulent impact it has on the marriage of two individuals who otherwise love each other. From the very first scene that the duo shared in the movie, it was obvious that Lieutenant Colonel Kirby York and Kathleen were bound to tell the story of a lifetime. But it would be another groundbreaking John Ford project that would turn John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara into the quintessential on-screen Hollywood couple. We're, of course, talking about the sky-high success of The Quiet Man, the electric on-screen chemistry. There's a reason why even Wayne and O'Hara cited The Quiet Man as their best on-screen venture. The movie is all sorts of perfect. The extraordinary romantic comedy finds life in the richness of Ireland. The duo's romantically blissful on-screen chemistry was already electrifying, but the beautiful scenery of Ireland added another layer of infatuation to their storyline. John Ford had done a remarkable job in showing the luscious rolling green hills of the country, as well as the charm of an idyllic small-town life in the fictional community of Innisfree. It wasn't shocking when the American tourists flocked to the film's actual shooting location, Kong, County Mayo in Ireland, to experience the pinch of love and magic that the duo had laid out for them. For the first time in American history, Ireland's natural beauty had received a well-deserved acknowledgement. The idea that stories and characters can transcend geographical boundaries was very much visible and felt in The Quiet Man. The movie told the story of a retired American boxer, played by John Wayne, who was visiting his place of birth in rural Ireland in the 1920s. Unexpectedly, he falls in love with an outgoing, charismatic and bubbly Irish redhead, played by Maureen O'Hara. In the classic trope of opposites attract, the actors delivered the performance of their lifetimes, aided by the natural chemistry and friendship that was forged outside the set. As the duo continued shooting the film, they were also spending an ample amount of time together. Let it be grabbing lunch, running lines together, or confiding in each other, Wayne and O'Hara began calling each other close friends. Both of the actors were aware of their stellar chemistry on the silver screen, and they used it to their full advantage. At the very beginning, while filming Rio Grande, the duo had little insight into how their real-life friendship would fire up their on-screen romance. In the words of Maureen O'Hara, they didn't realize that they had a special erotic chemistry together that would be so magical on-screen while filming Rio Grande. But when they finally watched the fully edited and final cut of the movie, only then did they understand that their performance was a perpetual show of kinetic sparks flying here and there. Later, Maureen described herself and Wayne as the couple who belonged together. So they knew that they could use their inner core of strength to their advantage to deliver memorable performances. And well, The Quiet Man was just that. The on-screen couple delivered one of the most passionate kisses captured on film in the rain. No wonder the embrace often makes it to the mainstream list of top kisses on the silver screen. But of course, Whenever the duo made appearances outside the movie sets, they were a force to be reckoned with, too. As soon as the actors stepped into the interviews or award shows, something would change in the air. Even though they were often bombarded with weird and invasive questions, the duo rarely bat an eye. They were always in their element, morally supporting each other during hard-hitting moments, completing each other's sentences, and making each other laugh. It didn't matter who was watching them. Believe it or not, even a serious and curt man like Wayne would be smiling tooth to tooth with Maureen. Several times the man had called O'Hara his leading lady while being married to the woman he claimed to love so much. Fans often took note of how incredibly flirtatious the duo was. In a memorable interview given in 1971, we saw the duo being extremely comfortable with each other. Perhaps this is why the interview is often cited as evidence whenever the question of the couple's alleged dating rumors is brought forward. Don't get us. Until Wayne's death in 1979, the actor never accepted that he had a romantic rendezvous with Maureen O'Hara. But the interview, which was recorded eight years before his passing, perhaps told us everything we needed to know. The duo stopped for an interview while attending the opening of John Wayne Theater at Knott's Farm, California. It wasn't new for O'Hara and Wayne to banter endlessly in front of the camera. But there was something new about this highly publicized interview. When the reporter tells Wayne that his four nephews never miss a John Wayne picture, 
The actor deliberately diverted all of the eyes and attention to the beautiful lady who was standing next to him. The Western hero smiled and responded to the reporter with, Well, that's because Maureen is in most of them. The reporter is taken back a bit too, but immediately gathers his spirits to say the actress has been his wife a good many times, to which Maureen corrected, His fighting partner. John Wayne looked extremely satisfied and proud at her response. But nope, the swoon-worthy moment doesn't end there. Perhaps Wayne thought that he had told the public way too much with his grinning smile that was directed towards Maureen. So he tried to divert the attention a bit by saying, That is actually what it's really been. I've never seen any of those love scenes. I'm either putting a skillet to her bottom or dragging her through sheep stuff in Ireland. Ah well, the damage was already done. The interviewer claimed that no matter what Wayne's characters put the actress through, she ended up looking beautiful and pretty on screen. The actor seemed to agree. He responded to the reporter with, There's no way to make her not beautiful. We have tried that. No wonder Wayne and O'Hara could never deny the romance rumors. John Wayne's only female friend. It's true that the actors had denied the possibility of any romantic relationship multiple times but their words and actors forever remained antithetical to the statements they were putting out. For instance, when asked about his friends in the movie industry, John Wayne famously cited his co-star, Maureen O'Hara, as his closest companion. He also clarified that even though he preferred the company of male friends, Maureen O'Hara was the only exception to the rule. Wayne famously said that the actress has been the only person who is his real friend, like a man would be. And then all hell broke loose when he called her definitely his type of woman. The direct quote from the actor made several rounds on the mainstream media at that time. But later on, even his official Facebook page captioned the picture of the great actors with the very same quote. The caption said, There's only one woman who has been my friend over the years. And by that, I mean a real friend. Like a man would be. That woman is Maureen O'Hara. She's big, lusty, and absolutely marvelous definitely my kind of woman. She's a great guy. I've had many friends and I prefer the company of men, except for Maureen O'Hara. It's unclear if John Wayne had some sort of friendship with other women too, but all of his public sightings and appearances were mostly with his Hollywood male friends like John Ford, James Arness, and Ward Bond. Whenever he stepped out with a woman, his choices came down to either his wife at that time or his favorite co-star, Maureen. Not to mention, the rumors of the romance were further fueled by the actor's three failed marriages. There's no denying that the actor had a string of romances with multiple women throughout his career. Many of them were forbidden romances. When Wayne quietly headed out for romantic getaways with beautiful women, he already had a wife and kids at home. This is why it is alleged that the reason why Maureen never felt comfortable with officially dating the actor was his propensity to cheat on his partners. As she was the actor's closest friend, she was fully aware of the ventures where he had been unfaithful to his wife or girlfriend. Most of these scandals were exposed posthumously, especially in the book John Wayne, The Life and Legend, authored by Scott Amon. Even though the book came out in 2014, it confirmed what he already knew. Indeed, John Wayne had a three-year love affair with the actress Marlene Dietrich, but his romance with Maureen O'Hara was a continuous on-and-off thing. This means that their love affair went beyond the measly timeline of three years. According to the 2014 publication, during his marriage to his first wife, Josephine Sense, a convent-educated, strict Catholic, he had two affairs, one with Marlene Dietrich and one with Esperanza Chata Bauer, the courtesan daughter of a Mexican brothel keeper. It is said that Josephine attempted to save her marriage by asking a priest to visit their home and counsel the actor on his unfaithful ways. Since the intervention was unprompted, John Wayne grew extremely hostile towards his wife. The couple soon divorced despite having four young children at home. The real troubles began for the actor when he married Chata, thinking that his short-lived love affair was an actual manifestation of love. And oh boy, was he wrong. It had turned out that Wayne had misjudged Chata and her intentions. She was solely interested in the actor as his visiting lady, rather than being a faithful wife to whom Wayne could come home. The eight-year marriage was a pretty tumultuous one. 
This is why it is suspected that the duo had been more than friends when John had confided in O'Hara about her deteriorating domestic life. This was also the time when the duo was rising high with the success of their movies. They had become household names. Everywhere they went, cameras and the public followed them. So it isn't surprising that the actors must have gone to lengths to keep their romantic getaways a secret. Even though we don't have an official receipt of their love affair, the sources close to Wayne cite that the legendary actor was in love with Maureen. At times, he didn't even bother denying it. It is speculated that while the actor had several reasons for calling it quits on his three marriages, his infatuation with Maureen had become a sore subject for his partners. Sharing the screen was one thing, but sharing a life with O'Hara was another. The duo had become emotionally close when Chatta began to drink heavily and developed a vicious temper. The final nail in the coffin was her affair with Nikki Hilton, the hippie party animal hotel heir whose former wife was none other than the graceful Elizabeth Taylor. When Wayne got to know about the romance, he filed for a divorce. But the story doesn't end there. It's true that Maureen had been Wayne's support system during an extremely tough time, but didn't realize that he was also unfaithful to Chata. Even if she knew about his romantic indications with the Peruvian beauty, Pilar Pallet, she perhaps didn't realize the short, fiery fling would turn into a full-fledged marriage. John Wayne had flown to Peru to scout filming locations in the country for his film, The Alamo. Since he was taking his gimmick as a producer and director very seriously, he was away from the United States of America for an extended period of time. At the same time, Maureen was back home or working on other projects. But as Wayne continued spending time in Peru, he developed a relationship with Pilar, who was also married then. Yet it didn't matter. Somehow, John had convinced her to divorce her husband and leave her life and legacy behind in Peru to move to America with him. It was later revealed that Pilar had gotten pregnant with Wayne's child while he was already married to Chata. Now, the actor knew that if the news of his infidelity made it to the public, the scandal might effectively end his career. So, he persuaded her to end her pregnancy. But the couple's troubles had just started. Before marrying Pilar, Wayne had given her the ideal image of what it is like to be a Hollywood wife. But back in America, the Duke was constantly away from home. Plus, the cultural shift from Peru to Hollywood was a lot for Pilar, who found it increasingly difficult to embrace her new reality. As a result, she had grown profoundly depressed and unhappy with her married life. She eventually became addicted to sleeping pills, and on one turbulent night, while on location with her husband in Louisiana, she slit her wrists during a really bad hallucination episode. Ideally, Wayne should have paused his work commitments to take care of his wife, but he didn't care much about her mental anguish, mostly because he was allegedly romantically involved with his closest female friend, Maureen O'Hara. In an unpopular decision, Wayne hired nurses and medical staff and sent them to California alongside his wife, Pilar. The actor himself stayed away from home, presumably finishing up his movie projects. But of course, if the flying rumors were anything to go by, he had other incentives to stay away from his wife, too. It's unclear the nature of the romantic affair between O'Hara and Wayne, but by the looks of it, it was a kiss-and-don't-tell commitment, where both of the parties deemed it fit to stay in marriages, too. A very close friend of Wayne, whose identity was not revealed, told the author of the explosive book that Wayne had a love affair with Maureen before his marriage to Pilar. The actress wanted to stay close to the Duke, but she was interested in a matrimonial alliance for some reason. Perhaps this is why the actor went ahead and started another flop marriage with a woman he barely knew. But at the same time, he also refused to cut off his secret romantic relationship with Maureen. Things changed drastically for the actress when John was unable to respond to Pilar's emotional needs. Her suicidal episode had changed the tone of the marriage. The couple would call it quits after 19 years of marriage and three children. But the Peruvian beauty didn't forget about the time when she needed her husband the most, but he refused to accompany her to California. It is rumored that Maureen was perhaps scared of the scandal that would have followed the duo endlessly. The stories of Wayne mistreating Pilar were already being discussed in the gossipy spots of Hollywood. If the duo had revealed their romantic affair or were exposed by the media, 
Maureen would have been the quintessential Hollywood homewrecker who wronged an emotionally vulnerable, faithful wife. Yet even those turbulent fears didn't stop the duo from meeting in secret. According to Eamon, Maureen and John visited the actor's Arizona ranch frequently. The Duke was known to confine himself in his ranch after completing a mega-project, or to find a relaxed weekend in his very busy life. At the same time, he kept his family and children in California and rarely visited the ranch with his wives. Well, how could he? According to the rumors, Wayne had kept the ranch exclusively for Maureen, who visited the secret spot whenever she could. The couple spent days in Arizona, away from the public eye and scrutiny, and only went back home when their respective partners inquired about their filing schedule and so on. Eventually, after his divorce from Pilar, the actor settled with his secretary, Pat. This is the time when Maureen and John weren't perhaps romantically involved, yet the rumors of their turbulent romance never died down. Maureen's grandson tells the truth. In the last years of John Wayne's life, he seemingly accepted the fact that perhaps he and Maureen would never enter a matrimonial alliance. You see, the actress was happily married to the pilot, Charles Blair, who was also a very close friend of John Wayne. The Duke had befriended the pilot during his marriage with his best friend. According to Maureen, Wayne and Belier were fond of playing chess together. At the same time, the actress was also very vocal about being close to the Duke's family, in a way a best friend would. In an interview given in the late 1970s, she described Wayne as her best friend, not just as man and woman, but as two human beings. She also revealed that she knew all of the actor's secrets, and he knew hers as well. No matter what happened in their lives, their first thought was to share the news with each other. This is precisely why it is rumored that Maureen knew all about her former co-star's infidelity, and while she loved him, she didn't believe he would stay faithful in their marriage. Plus, she had grown close to Wayne's children, who lovingly called her Auntie Maureen. This goes without saying, but her relationship with the children would have deteriorated if the truth about their love affair had gone out. Years later, the world would know all about the duo, who allegedly were just friends. Surprisingly, the biggest Hollywood expose came from Connor Bo Fitzsimons, Maureen's grandson and the custodian of her estate. Ever since the actress's passing in 2015, Connor has been working hard to preserve his grandmother's legacy for the years to come. In doing so, he has revealed a lot of personal details from the actress's life, including the turbulent rumor that never died down. Connor confirmed that O'Hara and John Wayne were definitely lovers. While their exclusive romance was brief, they had lots of love with each other until the veteran's death in 1979. Talking about the tragic death of the Duke, Connor said, That's the only time I had ever seen my grandmother cry. She didn't really cry when her husband died, but when Duke died, she cried. Growing up, Connor had heard his grandmother telling him the stories of how great of a man the Duke was. In those heartwarming moments, she had confided in her grandson with her biggest secret. This is why Fitzsimons was also able to reveal the real reason why Maureen O'Hara didn't marry John Wayne or start a relationship that wasn't forbidden or didn't grow out of infidelity. Apparently, O'Hara's profoundly strong personality didn't always work out for Wayne, who wanted his partners to be timid and servicing towards him. The actress had very strong opinions about how she wanted to lead her life, and while Wayne appreciated her outlook from a platonic lens, the romantic possibilities were bleak and grim. So, O'Hara deemed it fit not to marry her co-star as any contractual obligation would have been short-lived and turbulent. Plus, they were extremely close friends, and losing each other because of a marriage turned sour was off the table. Talking about the brief romance between his grandmother and the Western star, Connor said, I know they did at one point, but she was way too strong for him. They would never have been a good couple. And well, Iman's sources and the actor's close friends also seem to confirm the same. Allegedly, Wayne wanted his partners to be tame and submissive, everything O'Hara wasn't. It was also said that the actor would want to control his wives. From what they wore to where they went, he wanted to be in charge of every aspect of their lives. It is unclear how true those rumors are, but his former wives certainly didn't have the best things to say about him. So it is possible that while Wayne wanted to tie the knot, Maureen consistently said no, 
and their arrangement seemed to work. While Wayne was happily married to his fourth wife, Pat, Maureen seemed very supportive of the actor. In fact, her biggest tragedy was the actor's stomach cancer diagnosis, which eventually took his life. Many people often forget that around the same time, Maureen was suffering from uterine cancer too. But unlike her best friend, she was ultimately cured. When she got to know the good news, she called Wayne and cried on the phone. She knew that the love of her life wouldn't make it while she would live a healthy life. Around the same time, she began to vouch for a cause that was very close and dear to her heart. Before John Wayne could find his final resting place, she wanted the Duke to earn a Congressional Gold Medal. In her famous testimony, she said, To the people of the world, John Wayne is not just an actor but a very fine actor. John Wayne is the United States of America. She reiterated her 39-year friendship with the actor and urged the committee to give him a medal that would say just one thing, John Wayne, American. And unsurprisingly, that was the very inscription that was embedded on the medal that was bestowed upon the Duke shortly before his passing. Maureen's commitment to do right by her best friend eventually showed the world how much she cared about him. Perhaps this is why the story of the Duke and Queen of Technicolor would remain enchanting. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.